Good evening, everybody. Welcome back. Part four of Finding Your Path, Personal Exploration of Masila Sishar and the Path of the Just by Moshe Chaim Litzato. We finished off last week talking about how the entire world, what we call Jewish ecology, that uh, this world is a resource, a bit like if you want, like a sort of an atom. Uh, the atom is capable of uh, lighting a city or destroying a city. So this world is a facility, is a, is, a, is a resource. Hashem made this world full of many beautiful things, and they're all here for us to be able to use in our service of Hashem. And uh, the physical world is a, a beautiful place, as we're going to see in a second, that Hashem told Adam Arishan, the first man, he took him around Gan Eden. He said, look at my world, what a beautiful place I made here. Be careful not to destroy it. So how does a person destroy it? A person destroys chasu chali the world when he uses when he lets the world use him instead of him using the world. What do I mean? The Torah is one of the understandings of the word Torah is horot instructions. It's the instruction book on a very basic level. I mean, on a very simplistic level, it's the instruction manual for people who live in the world by uh, the person we call the person by Hashem who created the world and therefore understands what the purpose of the world is. Nobody can write an instruction manual better than the manufacturer of that particular car. Somebody builds a car, he knows how the car works, he knows which, which, which bit is for what and what it isn't for. But a person comes into this world and he doesn't understand that this world is really a resource. As we said before, it's a factory which is supposed to produce a product. And he becomes so enamored and obsessed with the world and everything that is in this world and he becomes diverted and uses this world as an end in, its, in itself. This is the way the world is destroyed. Because the nature of a person is, as we said before in previous chapters, a person is uh, part angel and part animal. And the animal part of a person uh, can take over and uh, his desires, uh, the lower part of a person, if not guided, it's like when the monkey gets behind the seat of the car. If you let the monkey get behind the seat of the car, then oi va voi. The, the man has to be behind the seat of the car, the seichel, the intellect. And even the intellect of a person is not foolproof because the intellect, unless it has Torah and mitzvahs, will go astray. You see many, many brilliant Jews. I mean, it's interesting, all our enemies, of all the insults they, they throw at us, the one they don't say is that we're stupid. Nobody says the Jews are stupid. And you see what happens when a Jew who doesn't have Torah uh, he'll still have his brilliance, he'll still have this as Rav Nata Shiller, should be well says. He has, Jew has an extra set, set of pistons. Now that can go for the good or the bad. You know, a person can become a Moshe Rabbeinu, or a person can become a, a Karl Marx and create a philosophy which has killed millions and millions of people, tens of millions of people in the hands of someone like Stalin. He could become a great Torah scholar, or he can... He'll still be brilliant, but his brilliance, if not controlled, directed, funneled by the instructions of the Torah, will, will inevitably produce something which is destructive. So, as we've seen in previous chapters that Hashem, the world itself is very happy when it's used in the correct way. We gave the example last week of this table, and this table is probably identical to the same table that came out of the same factory in Rishon Letzion, one of the table ended up in some uh, gambling club in Tel Aviv or some uh, night bar. And uh, the other table sat here where rabbis are teaching Torah, chavrusas are learning, tosvas. Now they look nice at the same, ta the same table. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> they look like the same table, but they're not. And as we said last week, this is actually a physical reality. The physical world becomes elevated or it becomes um, polluted by the actions of man, and of course, mostly by the Jewish people, because there's no responsibility, without, there's no privilege without responsibility. The Jewish people have been privileged to be Hashem's chosen people. We're supposed to be a light to the goyim and all a gola, and therefore we have much more power, much more ability to be able to elevate the world, or God forbid, the reverse. So this table looks the same as this table that's somewhere in Tel Aviv in a nightclub. And, uh, but it's not. The physical table itself is different. This physical table has had an aliyah, as the Mesilla says. It's a great ilui godl, the kol abrio. It's a great elevation for everything in the creation when it's used by an odom asholem, 
the perfected man uh, in his Kedusha. And that's why he brought the, uh, the, uh, the Medrash about the Or uh, Aganuz, the hidden light, the light that Hashem created at the beginning of creation was this supernal light. That was the Ihi Or right at the beginning of the Torah. As we said, that's not the sun and the moon. Sun and the moon didn't appear to the third day. So there was this supernal light that no longer we see because it was hidden away. It's called the Haganuz. Hidden. Haganuz means put away, sequestered. Why was it put away? Because Hashem didn't want the Rishoyim to have the power to be able to use this light. As we said, it was a very powerful light. And why was it powerful? Not because it said you can see from one end of the world to the other. It doesn't mean just it was like, you know, super duper bright and billions of watts. It means that you could see cause and effect. You could see why things happened. Now, that's a very powerful thing. If you can analyze why one thing causes something else in the hands of the wrong people, that's something which is extremely destructive. Hashem hid it away. That's what it's called the Oragonuz. And it was hidden away. And the light is at Or Samach. And that's where the Or Samach comes from. Or Yismach. The light will be happy. Why? Because it understood it was hidden. And the Rishoyim, evil people, would not have access to it until the right time and place where the Tzadikim will have that light. Similarly, we saw that the stones, the Yaakov Avinu, um, gathered around his head when he saw the dream of the ladder. And the Posik says in one <coughs> Posik Anavim, um, stones... Uh, sorry, Avanim, stones. And another uh, posseg says, Evan, stone, singular. So they start off as stones, plural, and they become one stone, a few psukim later. And Chazal teaches, the Medrash says, that what happened was that basically the stones were so keen, so desirous to be the one, Alai, uh, on me, the tzaddik should place his head. So they, so to speak, they had this, this power of, of wanting to be the, the stone on which the tzaddik laid his head, they fused together. So again, why? Because they understood that it's a great ele ele elevation for the entire world physically when it's used in the correct way. That's where we got up to last week. Okay, so, and as we said right at the beginning, al -ika, I'm starting with the paragraph, Hine ala ika hazer, this is in uh, um, Perik Aleph, so, Hine al on this general principle, Heirunu Zichron Levrocha, our rabbis have pointed out, have indicated in the Medrash Kohelis, Sha'omru, it says over there, and Zel Hashonim, this is the, this is a quote, Re'e Esma Seholokim. That's the Posik in Kohelis. See the actions, excuse me, of God. And the Medrash says, Basha Shabara Kodesh Bochu. As Adam Harisham, when Hashem created the first man, Adam. Natolo vehechziroi al kol ilone gan Eden veomaloi. He took him around and showed him all of the trees in Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden, and he said to him, Re Maasai, see my actions, see my works. Come and not im, how pleasant, umshubochim, and praiseworthy hein they are. V'chol ma barosi and everything that I created, bishvil cha barosi, I created it for you. Everything, as we said before, is here in the world to serve man, ultimately. We asked the question last week, I was some kind of salamander deep in the Amazon basin, how is that supposed to help man? How's, and we said that, you're right, I don't know, but some way in that vast jigsaw puzzle, which is called the universe, the creation, everything has a way of being in some way used um, for, for the Odom HaSholem to find perfection, to use this world as a tool in order to come close to Hashem. So Hashem says to Odom HaRishon in this Medrash, Ten daitacha, pay attention, Shalot kalkel, that you do not destroy, um, ruin the Tachriv and destroy es olami, my world. Next paragraph. Now he's going to move into a summation, summary. Klolo Sheldova. The general principle of what we've been speaking about. Man is not creation for his station in this world. Rather, of his station in the world to come. His situation, his station in this world. That is the means for his station in the world to come. Which is its purpose. As we've said on many times before, a person comes in this world, he's going to say, and thinks this is what it's all about, he's going to be sorely disappointed. For many reasons we'll see in a moment. But the main thing is that a person is not created 
for this world. This world is, we're going to see, is vital, if we can use the word. It's vital in as much as that's the only way that you can get to Olam Abba, but it's not of the essence. It's not what it, the point of things are. The point of things is Olam Abba, because as we said before, that's the place where a person will be, have the Hana of being close to Hashem. And as we said, he's put in this world first of all, so he can earn through his own efforts that closeness and therefore, um, uh, how do you say, what's the word in English? Own those, own those results. He's not getting it as a free hand, handout. It becomes more part of him to the extent that he earned it by working for it, by being in this world of challenge. He's going to say all this. Al Cain, therefore, you'll find many sayings of our sages all with the same theme, which is to a place and time of preparation, in the world to come, as a place of rest, and the consumption of that which is already prepared. Please stop me if you have questions. <coughs> and now he's going to bring a few of these these sayings of our sages. That's what Chazal teaches when they say, Ha'olam hazeh doyma la prozdo. This world is similar to a prozdo, could be a corridor. Uh, it's interesting, prozdo and corridor have the same ending. <coughs> <coughs> or it can be translated as a vestibule or an antechamber. They all, it's the same idea. The antechamber, the prozdo, the corridor, the vestibule, have one purpose and one purpose only, which is to get you into the palace. You can't get into the palace any other way. There are no other doors. There's no other way, that way in. That's why this world is vital. But if you mistake the vestibule for the palace, you made a big mistake. Another idea, now talking in terms of time as opposed to place. Today, to do them, to do the mitzvahs. And tomorrow, to receive their reward. This is not a place where a person re receives the real reward. Now, we spoke right at the beginning. I'm not going to go into it again now, but maybe we will in future times talk about this idea. That in essence, schar mitzvah mitzvah. The reward for mitzvah is the mitzvah. And we said on a, on a simplistic level, that means if you do a mitzvah, you get rewarded by the opportunity to do another mitzvah. But if you remember, those of you who are here, the idea is that schar mitzvah mitzvah, that really the reward to the mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. A person does in this world all of these actions, which are the mitzvahs, but he doesn't really understand them. As we said, this is a world, as compared in the beginning of the Torah, to a, a tree, uh, an eitz osepri, a tree which produces fruit. The original command to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, to the land was to bring forth an eitz pri osepri, where Chazal teaches the fruit of the taste of the tree was the taste of the fruit. They were identical. What does it mean the taste of the tree is the same as the fruit? It means that the action, the reward is in the action itself. The payoff of the action is actually felt at the same time, that the reward is the doing. Now, with Adam Arishan, when Adam Arishan sinned, so the world was cursed, and we live in a world now which is only an eight osepri, where we perceive the action and the reward to be totally separate, but they're not. Really, and that's why when we put on tefillin in the morning, I don't know about you, but uh, if one really understood what that was, a person would be just delirious with joy. Now, true, we put on tefillin, and hopefully once in a while we feel, wow, this is, you know, I'm doing something good, but it's an intellectual thing. It's not a visceral pleasure. It's not the schar of the mitzvah. The schar of the mitzvah will return, will be experienced when we get to Olam Abba, because Olam Abba really will be a rerun of Olam Azer, but on a level of revelation where all of the actions that we did, we will now experience and enjoy them in the way that they really were. Right now they're hidden from us. The reward is hidden. Schar mitzvah mitzvah. The schar of the mitzvah, the reward of the mitzvah is the mitzvah, but the enjoyment of that mitzvah in Olam Abba, where everything is revealed, that is the true place uh, of where we will have this manucha. And the reward for the mitzvah, which as we said before, is really the mitzvah experienced as it really is and it's panemius, and it's inside. And he brings another chazal. So, was, uh, again, Olam is a place of work, Olam Abar is a place to re uh, receive the reward. Another chazal says, Mi shetorech be'er Shabbos, yochol b'Shabbos. It's actually a song kids sing. 
Misha Torah Be'erev Shabbos. The one who, who works on Erev Shabbos, he'll have, as they say, what to eat on Shabbos. If you don't cook on Erev Shabbos, oy vavoy, what are you going to eat? You can't cook on Shabbos. So that's the same idea, that's the same mashal, the same concept. This world is like Erev Shabbos. This world is like Friday. And when you're going to enjoy all of the food that you cooked on Friday, on Shabbos. But if you don't cook on Friday, you're not going to have anything. Another example, Olam Hazer, is Doim Aliyabosha. This world is like the dry land. Olam Liyam. The world to come is like a sea. A person sets out on a sea journey and he doesn't stock himself up with provisions. He gets up into the middle, middle of the ocean. That's it. Same idea. This world is to prepare and the world to come is where that experience of closest to Hashem the schar, the reward, the pleasure are experienced. The Kehle Rabbim, Alzer Haderech. And there are many, many other Chazalim which have the same idea. Yes? Uh, the, que- the question is, so basically you could treat this part as a vestibule or like as a preparation for the next world. There are like multiple cases that might be like, for comparison, for example, babies that die without able to perform any single mitzvah. Or... Uh, I don't know, like some people that were reduced on the opportunity to perform mitzvah or their life was cut short due to some events so like or some ki- killer and his, mar- uh, his marriage prevented it. Like how would... Mm. That so the, quest- the question, I'll just repeat it, I'm not sure the microphone picked it up. The question is that you see many times, <coughs> for example, God forbid babies come into this world, live a very brief time. What does that mean? They have no lalom haba or people's lives are cut short, shemi uh, rachim. So one of the answers is, and there, is, uh, there are other answers, but I think uh, maybe that we understand that, that um, Judaism be, be, believes in reincarnation, Gilgulim. And I think the Vilna Gaon says in his generation, everybody, Kimad, everyone who's now alive is a, is a Gilgul, is a reincarnation of somebody who existed before. And we're sent back to this world to fix some particular thing. It's a merit that you come back down here because it means that you're, you're so, so to speak, given a second chance. <coughs> to fix something that you, you didn't fix in a previous incarnation. So it could be that a, a little baby comes into this world for a brief period of time in order to just f- to fix that particular thing that as that neshama needed to fix and then it can, it can leave the world. So it's not the whole picture. So that's, I think, one, one answer we could say. Okay. Now, let's go on. Vatire. Now he's going to talk about this from an intellectual point of view, a logical point of view, a philosophical point of view. If you look in truth, it's not possible that any Baal Seichel, any intelligent person, should believe that the purpose of the creation of man was for his station in this world. It's very difficult to say that man was created for, to, li- to be to just for this world. Why? Because what is a person's life in this world? Who really is happy, completely happy and tranquil in this world? The days of our lives are 70 years. If by reason of strength they're 80 years. Posik in Tehillim, Psalms. And their breath, Omal Oven, is toil and trouble. Become a Mineitza with how many problems, pain, and sicknesses. And pains in the body, physical pains, emotional pains, vitrodos, and problems. If you look at people's lives, everybody's life, everybody's, everybody has his problems. Everybody has problems, health problems, money problems, shalom bias problems, God forbid, all kinds of problems, psychological problems. You can't, it'd be very difficult to say that Hashem who wants to do good to man and created man for that purpose. That's the background here. He wants to do, man was created, as we said before, as that entity to which Hashem wants to give his goodness by virtue of the fact that he's the ultimate goodness. And he wants to give the, the higher form of giving, as we said before, is a give which, giving which is, uh, which, sorry, the highest form of good is a good which is dynamic, which gives. Man was created to be the recipient of that goodness. So it's very difficult to say that this 
is the goodness that Hashem intended for us this world when you see that so many things happen, wars, uh, right? Very difficult to say that. As, and as you pointed out before, tragedies, God forbid. And all of that, after that, after these 70 or 80 years of problems and pains and aches and, 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 and uh, arguments and fights and, and bloodshed, death, not one in a thousand people finds that this world will extend for him, will provide for him the pleasures and the tranquil, uh, true tra- tra- pleasure and tranquility. And even if you'll find that, one person in a thousand who really can say, you know, everything was gewaldic from the May moment I was born to the... Everything's been absolutely f- smooth sailing. Even if you find such a person, by the time he gets to a hundred, he'll re- already have passed away and be nullified from the world. That's it. And that's, Hashem created us for that. That's this good that He wants to give us. For Lord, not only that, if you want to tell me that man's creation was for this world, that's what he was created for, it would not have been necessary for the, 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 to have been breathed into man, right? Hashem breathed into his nose, a, 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 a soul, so elevated, so important. The soul is something so elevated, so lofty. The soul of a human being, of a Jew, is higher than that of the angels. So if this world is all there is, then why bother? You know, why put into, uh, breathe into man this lofty, lofty, elevated soul? If that's all this world is just about, you know, having... Uh, Good fun and faster sports car, and uh, you know, a nicer holiday. Kolshekain shehi einam motza shum nachas ruach b'chol inuge zeolam. All the more so, since the seeing as the soul itself finds zero pleasure in this world, the sh- the neshama is not interested in going to the cinema. The neshama is not interested in going out for a steak dinner. They're not interested in it at all. And this is what Chazel taught, taught us in the Medrash in Kohelis. And this is Lashonam Vagam Hanefesh Lo Timole. This is a posik from Kohelis. Vagam Hanefesh, also the soul will not be filled. Timole. This, the soul does not like this world. And he brings a moshul here. I'll, I'll embellish the moshul. The, parable a little bit. Once upon a time there was this uh, country bumpkin who found his way up to the, the capital city and as he's walking past the palace, he's, you know, he's on a tourist trip, he sees the king in the royal swimming pool and he suddenly realizes the, the king can't swim and the king's drowning and he leaps over the, 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 the fence and he rescues the king and the king says, wow, you know, I'm so grateful to you, you can have anything, anything you want. You saved my life. So this country bumpkin says, fine, I'll have your daughter. I want to marry your daughter. So you know, what can the king do? He promised anything he wanted. So they have this huge royal wedding. And of course, time comes after the festivities and the Sheva Brachas. So they have to make their way back to this peasant's lodging. And so, you know, they, they pile up on this sort of ox cart and uh, they set off across, across the wild, so, you know, I can get this picture of this sort of frozen steppe somewhere out there in Tajikistan or uh, Siberia or somewhere. You know, and they're traveling for days and days and days and, you know, this poor princess is sitting on this ox cart. And finally they get to this deserted hovel in the middle of absolutely nowhere. And he jumps down off the ox cart with tremendous aplomb and pride, indicates to his new bride their new bridal apartment. Ta-da! So she takes one look at this hovel and she collapses in tears. Tears. So he looks at her. 
can't really understand what's the problem. And he thinks, ah, we haven't really eaten properly for the last few days, so I'm going to rustle up, rustle up some really delicious grub. So he goes inside and he cooks up the most delicious food that he can possibly conceive of, blood sausage and boiled potato. Mwah! And he puts it on the table and he goes, ta-da! And the princess takes one look at this and she collapses even more tears. He really doesn't know what's wrong with her. And then he sees that in the corner of the, this hovel, this hut, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> there's a hole in the roof where the water is now cascading in. So he, he jumps up onto the roof and with his, you know, Mr. Fix-It, uh, he goes over to the corner and he gathers together some unspeakable concoction of whatever's been lying around on the roof. And he manages to do this pretty good um, fixing job. Comes down, ta-da! Tears, more tears, more tears. The princess is inconsolable. That's the mashal, that's the parable. The princess is the soul. And the peasant is the body. And the princess is not happy in this world. And the more the body tries to give to the soul, the more the pauper tries to give to the princess, it will never be more to her than blood sausage and boiled potato because she's dined in the palace on luxury cuisine that this peasant has no idea about. So similarly, the neshama comes from a place so high and elevated, the body has no idea. But the body understands, right? The neshama, he understands the soul inside him is, is not happy. So what does he do? He wants to give a, a faster sports car. He wants to give a better meal, whatever it is. And of course, the more he gives, the more physicality the body gives to the neshama, the more disgusted she is by it and the more unhappy she is. That's the moshal, he says. I'll read it now. What's it similar to? Irony, to a irony like a suburb, suburban person. I called him bump, country bumpkin. She Nasa Basmelech, who married the queen, a, a, a princess. If she would bring, if he would bring her, Kal Masha Ba'olam, everything in the world, Eina Chashuvim La Klum. It's not worth anything to her. She he Basmelech, because she is the daughter of the king. Kach hanefesh, similarly as the soul. Ilu heveselah kol madane olam. Were you to bring her all of the delicacies of the world, eno klumla. It's not going to be anything to her. Lama shehi mena elyonim. The neshama comes from the highest reaches of the creation. V'chein omer ribonu zichron lebrocha. Similarly, our sages teach us, al korcha ato notza. Against your will, you were created. And against your will, you were born. Meaning what? The neshama doesn't want to come down here. The neshama is brought down into this world against her will. The neshama does not like this dark, dank world whatsoever. She's disgusted by it. The neshama is disgusted by this world. So where is he getting with this? It's not logical to say. For sure, Hashem would never have created an entity, the Neshama, with whose, uh, so whose purpose is something totally against its, its nature. It doesn't make sense to say that Hashem would create the Neshama with, with, from such a high level. First of all, number one, it would be an unnecessary. And now he's going further. Not only is it unnecessary for man, if, again, if all our creation is for Olam Hazer to have such an elevated soul, but also, it's that why would Hashem force the Neshama, who's disgusted by this world, to come into this world? Doesn't make sense. Ela brioso shala odom la abohi. These, for these two reasons, we have to say that it must be that a man was created for Olam Abba. That is his true tachlis, his true purpose, his true situation and station. And the reason he's given the neshama, and the reason why the neshama is put into his, 
into the body. Because you say, well, why send the neshama down here at all? Ki lo rui la void, because it's, wor- it's worth, it's kadai, it's worth it for the body <coughs> to work, <coughs> in, to elevate the neshama. I'm going to sp- speak about this in a second. Ubayuchala odam la kabel. Through this coming down into this world, the neshama coming down into this world and doing the mitzvahs, because the mitzvahs only exist in this world. And that's the only way you, we, we can come, that's the way Hashem, Hashem set it up. The only way we can get close to Hashem is to do the mitzvahs, and the mitzvahs have to be done in this world because they're physical, because they have to be the temptations not to do the mitzvahs. We have to choose, to, we have to work, and by doing that, therefore we elevate the neshama. And therefore, the kabal schar b'mokoyim was manoy, because then the neshama will, re, 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 will receive its reward in the correct time and, time and place. Shaloi ha'dava nimos el nishmosu ko'olam hazeh, because then, when, the nish, when, that, when a person uses this world in the correct way, so the neshama, will, far from being despi- uh, disgusted by this world, when it understands that this world is being used to elevate it. Ela Adarab, rather the reverse. Nehav, it's beloved. This world is beloved. V'nechmod mimeno, and she is happy to be in this world. Was there poshut? Because why? Because the neshama understands that the true ele- the, the, the elevation of the neshama, the neshama can't be elevated when it's the, in the world of the neshamas. It's static. The only way it can be elevated is to come in down to this world of challenge, and be elevated by us doing our job properly and using everything in this world, the physical world, to elevate the neshama. And the neshama then goes, is happy because it understands it's being elevated in this world. And that's what makes a person happy. A person instinctively understands when he's doing an, a mitzvah, when he's doing the right thing, when he's davening. I'm not going to say a person feels this all the time. Sometimes a person gets knocked off the track. But we've all had moments. Anybody who's ever done at least once well in his life understands what I'm talking about. Anybody who understands when he does a, a chesed, he, underst- he has a feeling of, of satisfaction which is much greater than any physical pleasure can ever be. More satisfying, more lasting, more real. Because the, he, the neshama is happy with the fact that it's being used, that the body is now being <coughs> used in the proper way. And she is benefiting from that. And of course, as the Ramchal says, that the Neshama, uh, as well as going to Olam Abba, the, the goof also has to go to Olam Abba. And that's why there has to be the resurrection of the dead. Physical resurrection, because it's seeing as the, the goof, the body, was a, a partner in this process of the elevation of the Neshama, it's only fair that the body should also receive its reward. Sure. If uh, given this life was created for us to perform the mitzvah, then it could be as an assumption that God should have made it easy to make the mitzvah. But for example, like uh, Bam Shem Tov, his story, like how, how he was getting to Israel, is like he had all the obstacles on his way to perform the mitzvah. Why it wasn't it easy? Okay, once he decided, he go himself, I understand it might be hard to decide, but once he decided, well, should like kind of like open mm-hmm. and make, make him perform the mitzvah. So the question is that if Hashem wants us to do the mitzvahs, so, and once a person decides to do the mitzvah, so why sometimes is the performance of the mitzvah so hard? So hard. So Chazal teaches the fumtsa agra. <coughs> According to the, I guess in English it, kind of, it comes out like no pain, no gain. But it's not quite like that. It's the fumtsa. According to the, the pain, agra is the reward. This He's going to talk about this in this next paragraph, which I think we'll leave till next week. <clears throat> this is a world of challenge. Uh, it's it's clear that a, I mean we can understand maybe talking about no no pain no gain. Anybody understands that if he goes to a, a gym and uh, he's capable of pumping, uh, I don't know, you know, what can people do? I don't really know what these things. Well, how much they? Or like a shoulder press. Or yeah, like shoulder. How much? Kilo, twenty kilos. Twenty kilos, right? He can do twenty kilos. So if he goes in, I'm saying, but if he goes into the gym and, and he and he pushes twenty kilos, he's not going to get anywhere, right? Yeah. Okay, he may stay reasonable. But how's he going to build muscle? Twenty-five kilos, thirty kilos, and he's got to keep apping the ante all the time because the way the body grows is through challenge. 
is through making it a little bit more difficult. So some, that's the same marshal with the neshama. A person spiritually has to and keep, so to speak, upping the ante. Rav Dessler has a beautiful idea called the point of Bechira, the Kudata Bechira, which I don't know if you've heard of. So this idea is that, uh, that every person all the time is moving up in his level of spirituality when a person, let's say, first comes to him towards Samech. So he probably, you know, looks at the, the light switch, half of Shabbos going, well, I want to turn that light on. Or if he smokes cigarettes, which of course he shouldn't, people don't smoke anymore, Baruch Hashem. But back in the day when people smoked cigarettes, he was probably looking at that pack of cigarettes. In. Now, let's say after a year in Osamech, or maybe less, hopefully, that doesn't bother him anymore. Okay, what's going to bother him maybe is that, uh, I don't know, he's going to be more, it, that he finds it very difficult not to speak Lash and Hara. In other words, a person's challenge is constantly inching up together with his physical status, the, uh, sorry, uh, um, spiritual status. The higher a person climbs on the spiritual ladder, concomitantly Hashem notches up, so to speak, the weights right, on, on the bench press. Why? Because a person is in this world is supposed to be, and we're going to see this next week, we're going to finish now, but a person this, in this week, in, in this world, is supposed to be in a situation of challenge. That is one of the things we're supposed to be doing in this world. There are three things he's going to say next week. We'll just give a, how do you say, a, um, a sneak, preview. sneak preview. That, and Silas so is going to say that a person is in, in this world to do three things. La vodas Hashem, la sosas mitzvahs, la amod ben asoyin. So, la vodas Hashem, I think, probably means the avoda, which don't, in the base of Migdash, we don't have that anymore. How do we, what's the avoda now? Tfila. It's the Davan. It's the Davan. Why? Because that is the way a person is in contact with Hashem. To do the mitzvahs, that's self explanatory. And to stand up to Nisoyen. To grow. To stand. When a person is Amod ben Nisoyen, when he stands in Nisoyen, he grows from it. And then Nisoyen. It really comes out from this that if those are the three things that a person is in this world for, then every single thing in this world is a Nesoyen, greater or lesser. Where to look, what to say, what to eat, what not to eat, what time to get up, what time to go to bed, what to think, what to look at. A person all the time has to be understanding that I'm in a situation of challenge and I can grow from the situation or, God forbid, I can, I can be knocked down by it. Everything is in the soil. The Bali must say that a person, uh, an Oni, a poor person, comes around to collect a tzedakah during davening, and he puts in his hand in his pocket, and he wants to give him a shekel, and he pulls out a half a shekel. That's also in the soil. Even the smallest things which don't go right are in the sionot, are things which are supposed to challenge you in one way or another. You wanted to say something? Yeah, uh, yeah I wanted to say that there's some challenges that break people, like that they impose on the cell and they break them. For example, like, stop smoking the cigarettes. Some people try, do it radically, and then they fail, uh, then they fail, and they smoke even more, or like Shabbos keeping. They start immediately with Shomer Shabbat, they fail, uh, and they never come back to this topic ever okay. again. So there's a, there's a, this is, a, i just come to you in a second. <clears throat> so this is a problem, which I think um, often, or not often, sometimes happens when people become religious. And it's, an, it's, it's called in Yiddish, Chaping Malachim. Which means grabbing onto Malachim. You want to, you know, grab onto the angel and there, there are no, there are no, how do you say, um, uh, there are no uh, jet propulsion, there are no rockets to the sky. Everything is one is incremental, one step at a time. And as you say, it's very dangerous when a person tries to jump for the moon. He can end up on his face. So this is why we say, Kanelecha Chaver, acquire yourself a friend, Vaselecha Rav. You need a rabbi and a friend who can tell you exactly where you're holding and to tell you, what, what you what's the next step, what should you be doing. And uh, if a person, it's like in the gym, you know, a person goes and pulls out, I don't know, 300 kilos and he's going to hurt himself mm-hmm. if, he, if he manages to do anything. But uh, the only way in, in phys- physical life, in spiritual life, in anything in life, the only thing is slow, incremental improvement. But it has to be constant. And maybe we'll talk about that next week as well. There's an idea in, in Musa, in, in spiritual improvement, that things only, are, are only stick if they're done all the time and if they're small. Yeah. 
this coming back to the building muscle example is a phrase in, in that, that world that you know if you want to build muscle effectively you need to stimulate not annihilate and so stimulate not annihilate sometimes it's important how you how you lift the weights not what weights you lift so right. you can you can lift 20 kilos and get you, you can do it for a year and still get very good results if you lift it a certain way how you lift can then cause improvement as opposed to trying to always add more you can get more from what you've got already so that would be the intention with you know putting on tefillin not just you know throwing them on because yeah, spiritual gains to be had from the how. Right, in the kavana, in, in, yeah. in, 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 the, in the intention and the thought and the preparation. Absolutely. Okay, Thank all the best. Take care. Much.